What is up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Lost Mine of Fandelver here on Swindler's Den. <sighs> boy, oh boy. Oh, happy Halloween. And Hallow's Eve, I suppose. Um, this is, this is awkward with the, with the sad music, but uh, if you guys caught last session, some shit happened. And today we're, I think we're all pretty excited to get into the game and, you know. <laughs> um, anyways, so without further ado, we got our, uh, our amazing Equa is Not Funny playing Jeb, Tommy Taco playing Zorag, Baka Zombie, aka Sharp Addressed Gaming, playing the one and only Valiada, Takoon, all of those titles that I can't. <laughs> and last but not least, we have the wonderful Nissa playing a dead pirate. Playing a corpse. <laughs> so, last episode, guys, we left off at a at a bad spot. But let's rewind a little bit further and recap. Valida. You uh, killed your arch nemesis, a bugbear by the name of King Grohl, who had killed your mentor um, and tutor, blacksmithing teacher, what have you, um, in a fight in a cathedral against him, a few fellow goblins, and a Rick. You guys pretty quickly dispatched those those creatures out much of an issue. Um, half your party went to rest. The other half of the party went the other direction to explore some more of the castle, and that's when things went a little astray. astray. And uh, Jack, being Jack, decided to poke her head around a little bit too more too much than she should, and. Uh, found Gundren. She she accomplished the mission. She found Gundren, yelled to the others, shot at the the captors. Um, unfortunately for her, they the captors were able to knock her out very quickly um, and drag her into the room where they were holding Gundren. At which. Jeb ran back to get the others with the help of Sticky. They came back into the fight and were stuck now in a, a battle in a cloud of darkness with a spectator uh, shooting different varying rays at them. It was a really hard fought battle. The Dryder that you guys saw uh, carried off Gundren into the woods. And you all, well, Volida ran out after the Drider, lost track of it, and joined the battle of the townspeople who were causing a distraction for you all. Uh, unfortunately, they had also suffered major casualties, Randolph, Pearson, and Lenine being main three. Um... While Zorag and Jeb, you two ran inside after after where Jack had been taken, and uh, upon entering the room, the a drow that um, happened to be doppelganger and the uh, or another doppelganger like the one that you had fought previously slit her throat, and she bled out before you. Uh. That's pretty much where we last, where we left off last episode. Uh, Volley did just come back, seen the body, and there was a small amount of discussion that was held. So I guess that's where we'll pick up. Yeah, Volley did just carried Jack outside. Um, and she's talking to Sister Gabriel. <laughs> and um so there's nothing 
in your power that you can do? No, I'm afraid not. All right. She'll turn to Sildar, who I assume is outside. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to carry her back to town and get her ready we for her last journey. Lots of dead here. Yes. Uh, uh, can you... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. We're going to be taking a cart and bringing it over here. If you're more than welcome to use it as well. I'll carry her for now, but yes, you gather your dead and bring them back um, to town. Uh, can you and Jeb go find Zorag? He ran off, and he's going to want to be there for sending Jack off. And while you're in there, could you just double check to see if there's any signs of the brothers, the Gundren, or the Rockseeker brothers? Understood. Uh, it should be pretty clear. Just there is an owl bear in there, but it is trapped. So it's as long as you stay away from it, it should be fine. Hmm. And she'll turn to Grista. Does, can you come with me, as, so I can get this body ready, get Jack ready? Yeah, yeah. She'll start walking back towards Vandalin with Jack in her arms. Okay, Jeb. Were you already inside, or did you go outside with Valida? I believe I went out to alert everyone, and I think I went back inside because I saw Zorak take off. I believe. You went back inside? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, back inside, Sildar uh, bumps into you. Have you found Zorag? No, not yet. He um, ran off somewhere or other. Um, you want to go look for him? Yes, Valida wants us to go. Get him. Cool. Well, all right. Let's go. And we'll just start walking after Zorak. Wherever I last saw him go, I'll go. Okay. I would say it's not hard to find him. He is making a lot of noise. <laughs> yeah. We um. Eventually, you're you and Sildar are able to track down Zorag. Who's running around inside, breaking shit? Zorag, you're in a. I assume you're in a blind rage, so I don't know if you notice them or not. That's up to you. Jeb, what would you do? Uh. Is he still, like, breaking shit? Oh, yes. Okay. I will, uh, stick to the walls, and I will say, um,. Still, that would have told me that Valley had left, right? Yeah. Okay, I'll say, um, hey, uh, Valley, it is gone with the body back to town. If you want to head back with them, with us. I did not hear you. Okay. Um, he just keeps at this point Zorag's literally punching a wall hurting himself Zorag do roll it. me oh yeah go ahead Jeb I'm gonna walk up and I'm gonna put my hand on his leg cause I can't reach his shoulder and see if he reacts to that at all yes Zor so Zorag, he's punching the wall. He's feeling you like grab his leg, and he just turns to you. He's like, you just see his eyes are a much brighter orange with like a red outline around him at this point, almost as though the orange is slowly being encompassed by the red color. And he just looks at you. Uh, what kind of face do you have? 
just my regular one. Pretty pretty bog standard. I'm not making much of an expression. I'm not scared by any means. Okay, uh, he's gonna just kind of start panting really hard. Just... <sighs> and you see, like, the red starts to recede, and then slowly the orange glow goes away. And then he just kind of looks dead in the face. Are you going to continue punching shit, or do you want to keep going home? Let's go. Good move. I'll, I'll lead him out. And back to the rest of the group. Before we go... <clears throat> I believe Valida did want us to... Search for any clues... Yeah, um... We could come back, I suppose. No, it's fine. I'll I'll help. Zorag, if you want to go back, you can. You probably catch up with her. Zorag's gonna look down at Jeb and kind of put his hand on his head and just nod. But when he looks at Sildar, he doesn't like who he's looking at. And then he just leaves. I will take note of that. Right. Let's go searching, I guess. And Soldar and I will go off and look for clues. Cool. Uh, anywhere in particular you would like to look for clues, um, go back to the uh, owl bear room. You could go back to where Jack was killed. You can go. Specifically that room and any room that the Dryder might have left through, I'll look there and then if nothing turns up we'll do a quick run through of just a general idea, see if I missed any rooms um, that they might be holding the other two dudes in. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Okay, um, roll me... <clears throat> Uh, roll me perception checks. Oh, 13. Zorag, did you stick around to look or no? I think Zorag left. So he left. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, yeah, I did leave. I just had to turn my fan off real quick. I'm sorry. Gotcha. Let me see what Sildar would roll. Well, those aren't the right kind of rolls. What is, um,. Investigation or perception based off of wisdom. It's not yeah. a great role. I guess you guys don't find anything. Uh in in the room where Nis where Jack met her and uh you would find Um a sack containing two hundred and twenty silver pieces. I will pick that up. Okay, um, and when we are done and leaving, I will turn to Sildar and I will say, um, Do you have, like, an afterlife in your religion? Are you religious? Of course. We do. I don't know any other, like, people, like, gods and shit. Um, I don't know if, you know, she believed in any of that shit or not, but, um, you know, if she did, I think it's nice if, if you believe in that, I guess, hmm. helps. We'll see her again someday, is that what you mean? Sure, we'll see. Depends on how it all goes, I suppose. Well, we have a long day, night ahead of us. It would look that way. Um, try and stay away from Zorag. He seems a bit unhinged. 
Understandable. He just lost his friend. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. We'll see. And I'll just I'll walk out of the castle and back to try and catch up with the group with my 25 foot walking speed. Okay. Um, as you go outside, uh, Sildark's shortly behind you too. Um, <clears throat> you see a cart loaded up with the dead, not including Jack, because Volley just walked off with Jack. Um, mm-hmm. But there, there's dead in here, and even uh, Radoth is in there, not dead. He's he's alive, but wounded. Um, and sister sister Garyel's up there in the in the cart, just kind of giving rights to people and um, watching over Radoth to make sure he stays conscious. <laughs> I will actually very quick run up to Sister Gary Allen and I'll be like, Oi! Word? Uh, uh, sure. You're a cleric, right? Yes. Can you can you do the bringing back to life thing? No, I'm... I'm not that powerful. Right, okay. Um, just... You, that's, like, a, a, okay to do, isn't it? Like, if that was a thing that happened, then people would be fine with that. Some faiths... Accept it, others don't. It's. I'm not sure which faith your friend belonged to. Yeah. Um, but. Me neither. Oh well. It's a. Uh... Cheers. I'll think on that. And uh, Sildar rallies the remaining people together and they start pulling the cart back to town. Um, I assume you join. Yep. Uh, And uh, yeah, you guys head back toward Phandalin. Valida, you're walking with Grista Mm -hmm. to Phandalin with Jack in your arms. Is there anything you would like to do before cutting back to town? I well, should just be walking not like fast, but at a decent enough pace. And mm-hmm. just looking like blank face forward and every once in a while looking down at Jack's face and then continue looking forward. But yeah, she's heading towards the sleeping giant. Okay. Eventually, the um, the cart catches up to you with Jeb. Uh, Zorag, are you are you heading back to Phandalin? Yeah. So, like after Zorag left, if there's anyone out there, he would just look at him, kind of with that blank stare, like a Volita. And if they pointed in that direction, he would have yeah. went back. Yeah, they pointed down where they where she walked to. Um. Yeah. So, Volley Duck, uh, Zorak catches up to you, and then like a couple seconds later, you hear the cart. The cart catches up. You're more than welcome to put. I guess Sildar would say, it. "You're more than welcome to put Jack on here. She could must be getting heavy." No, that's fine. I've got her. I also forgot to mention, during the fight with Grull, her hair is completely out of its tie now. It's like the first time it's been down in a long time. Mm. So, the group, all the survivors together, head back down the Tribor Trail. You reach the, the turn and enter on the path back into Phandalin. You can see it. A few, a few times now you've come this way and you've been on the top of this hill looking down over Phandalin. 
Uh, usually with a kind of excitement. Uh, but this time, it hits you in your gut. And you just know you failed your mission. But on top of that, you're going back to a town full of people that are expecting to see their loved ones, their family and friends, and not... Some were going to be receiving bad news today, tonight. Um, so, you, the party, uh, wheels in to Fandolin. Um, did you guys get taken over to this? What I'm on the town map right now. Yeah, town map. Why didn't I get taken town over map. to it? Weird. Are you on a different layer? No. I, it's okay. I just manually did it. It's just weird. It didn't automatically bring me. Oh, I know why. Whoa. I've noticed that if you're on another page and you just drag everyone over to that page, it doesn't go up and do it for you. You have to click on it. Yeah, yeah. No, I just I usually rejoin as a player on my second monitor, but I didn't do that this time. That's all it was. Just realized music was playing double as well. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, as you're coming down the trail, closer into town, you start to see a stir in the people. Um, they start to notice your arrival and return and people start to come out of their houses they poke out of nearby places and come out to greet you all uh, I w you see a woman who looks to Sildar and Sildar returns with just a head shake and the women's excited smile quickly turns to a frown and it seems like it's hit her and she doesn't see she's looking back and forth at all the, the remaining people and she begins to to sob um, you get further into town and a man runs to the cart pushing aside people, blocking his way. And he kneels beside uh, the body of Lenine, and he just grabs her arm and is kneeling there and begins to cry. Uh, you're back in Fandolin. Uh, <clears throat> what would you like to do? So, Valida, very stone faced, not even acknowledging anybody, is just going to continue to walk to the sleeping giant. Okay. You do so. Does anybody follow Valida, the stone, the sleeping giant? Yeah, Zorag will be. Yeah, I'll follow too. As you all head off down to the Sleeping Giant Inn, Tap House, sorry. Uh, you just, you know, if you turn over occasionally, you start to see a large group forming by the, uh, the cart. And, uh, yeah, you head into the Sleeping Giant Tap House. Lido will lay check down on the bar. Yeah, the, the few people who are here, like, like look surprised, shocked, upset, um, and then realizing that must mean that they've returned, they head out as well. Uh, 
was she'll turn to Krista, who I assume followed us because I asked her to. Yeah. Um, she'll say, can you get a very large jar, some of your best rum, and some bandages? Like a large wrapping of bandages. Say no more. And she, uh, she does that, fetches it for you. Yeah, she's grabbing it. Volley will just say, uh, I wasn't with her to protect her in life, but the best I can do now is help her pass on her last journey and start to look through her stuff to find things to send with her. Right. Okay. Um, any weapons and any bag she had, any stuff in pockets. Find a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. So, the very first thing you probably notice uh, is she's already. It took you probably it took you at least an hour to get back, probably longer. And she's already begin to just stiffen the slightest bit, and um, you notice in her hand. Almost like in the last seconds of life, she gripped on to something and she's holding it in her hand. Do you attempt to yeah, open her hand? I'll attempt to take it out of her hand, yeah. Yeah. You do, and it's a, it's a compass. You've probably seen the compass before. I've seen her look at it a couple times. Yeah, and as you look at it, it's not moving? Give me a survival check. Survival? Well, I not really does how to do this one. Uh, yeah. Uh, you're like, I don't think that's pointing north. And then you start to like kind of spin the compass mm. and it just always points in the like um, or it, it's always pointing at the same spot. It doesn't move with you. Move, you know what I mean? Like, a compass would stay pointing north, but this compass yeah. isn't pointing one singular direction when you, like, spin it. Almost as if it's pointing to something on the compass, so it stays pointing to where yeah. that is. Not like a, okay. Yeah. That's strange. Is there anything else about the compass at all turning it around? Uh... Jack, was there anything else? Was there any special writings on the compass or anything, or was it just pretty much a compass? The uh, two, just the two uh, letters carved uh, inside of it, uh, J and then S. And it's like very faded, it's like it's been, like someone had been running their finger over it for a very, for many, many years. Just set that down next to Jack and then continue looking through her stuff. I know she had like a rapier. I think we picked up her gun at one point. Yeah, Jeb did. We'll say that you guys picked up the gun even if you hadn't. Um, I'm sure you guys would have. Uh, Jack, would you like to list off some things that you might think would be of value or note? Right, well, there's the rapier. The talon sword, a whip, two hand axes, obviously the ammo, a crowbar, a hammer, some pittance, obviously torch and tinderbox, rations, water skin, rope, uh, the poster for the orcs, uh, the scrolls, all the scrolls, there's five of them. The scrolls go right in the garbage can. <laughs> <laughs> the potions the potion that we thought was invisibility but unconfirmed the deck of cards that has 19 cards left the eye patch a bottle full of dark rum that silver goblet with moonstones tinker's tools a small cask of dwarven dwarven brandy that has 20 servings in it and a letter. 
I will check the letter. May I read it out? Yeah, sure. Hey, Ma. Surprise. It's Jacqueline. I'm sorry I haven't been in contact. If Flynn has said anything to you regarding me, ignore that pointy-eared bastard. He led a mutiny against me. Me! I was stranded on an abandoned island for a forgotten trade port. It was only when I finally managed to catch a ride to port that I realized how long I've been gone. I know you would I know I would go months without word, but a year is too fucking long. I hope to see you, but every day, as Pa said, your wave moves across the sea. When it crashes, you return to the water. Know that I love you. On a side note, I met a motley bunch. They're Valida, Zorag, and Jeb. Good bunch. I would have sailed with them. You'd like them, Ma. Right. I don't know what else to say other than, no, the compass is still stuck. Well, everybody heading into battle. I'll pen out another page after. Uh, what did you say the name was on there for the... Pointy uh, bastard, as you put it. Flynn. On the front, yeah, Flynn is the name, but uh, on the envelope part, it's the name on there says Nula Nulara. N U L A R A. Yeah. She will put that note in her pouch. I straight up, I straight up almost flipped off the camera. <laughs> like. <laughs> Yeah, she'll put she'll put the note in the pouch, and under her breath she'll say, "Spirits, I don't think we're finished." Um, and then she'll also put the eye patch in the in her pouch, so she has the eye patch in that. Um, she'll set aside the goblet, and the brandy and the rum. Um. I think I should, like, only hearing that little bit about the compass, I think she'd put it back in her hand. Okay. And, and then, like, uh, I'm trying to decide between Talon and, and the rapier which one should go with her. Have you used Talon or the rapier more? I can't remember. Uh, well, I've used the rapier more. I have used Talon a few times, but I have used the rapier more. Okay, yeah, so the rapier would, like, be in her hands as she held, like, the compass in her hand, and then the other hand on top of it, and then the rapier, like, down the rest of her body. Um, and then when Grista gets back with the stuff, she'll take the bandages, like, unravel them from the wrap that they're on, uh, put them into that jar, and then fill that jar with rum. Okay, yeah, all easy enough to do. I'm gonna take the cards and the scrolls and that's all i'm going to take cool one is that uh, lightning bolt scroll one is the scroll of augury mm -hmm. and the other three are mystery okay she also um, really did put her the gun on jack as well so it's like wherever she held it was zorag uh with Valida this entire time, did he notice anything particular about that compass? Or uh, did he just basically see what uh, Valida saw? Roll me a history check. That's gonna be a one. I was so expecting <laughs> that, Tony. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's not a nat two. one. It's it's a two. You rolled a two. But yeah, but I got a negative one in history. You you don't remember anything special about the compass. You don't notice anything special about the compass. And the note just said the compass doesn't work, or still doesn't work. Yeah, I know Gorak's totally going behind the counter and just fixing him some whiskey to himself, and he doesn't care if anyone tries to stop him. When we pick up the compass, does the needle change for each of us? Or like if we put it down, does the needle change when we put it down compared to when we're holding it? Are you like trying these things out? 
Sure. If I had it. set it down before she put it back in Jack's hands, so. No, at the if moment, okay. nothing's happening with the compass. It just stays in, like, what I will describe the two o'clock position. Okay. I will uh, mention to Valida. No, which position was it? It was. Ceased. Like, was east. on the compass, if it was uh, to the. So, between yeah, north and then. east on the compass itself. Between north and east? Oh. Okay, then the two o'clock. Yeah, so that'd be two o'clock. Between, like, one thirty. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> we'll go with that. Okay. I'll mention it to Valida, and I will say. Um, May I don't know where this is pointing, if it's even somewhere important or anything. But maybe if you want to do this thing, maybe it should be there. Saying that we are on a time limit, I understand, but you know. You're saying you want the body to be brought there. I mean, because northeast from us is like. You would know that that's back toward Inland. the goblin cave, uh, and then eventually the castle that you just came from. That's like what's northeast. Beyond that, I can't even think of what the nearest town is. <laughs> so we shouldn't bring her to the coast, is what you're trying to say? I was thinking of bringing her out to the ocean for this. Oh, is that not where the coast is? The coast I've never is been west. To the, coast. the coast is west, yeah. Okay. May, would you want to keep this? Just in case we find whatever is there? We might. We probably should. I mean, if, like, I don't know if we plan on trying to bring her back. I, I don't know how I feel about that personally, but or how she would feel about it, but... If it ever came up, it would probably be better to have it still. She'll put the compass... After that, she'll put the compass in her pouch next to the note. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, How much gold did she have? Uh, oh, yeah. that's a good question. I, don't, I think she was down by quite a bit because she'd spent a lot of it. Yeah. Okay, well, she has seven copper, three silver... And 83 gold. Okay. That's fair. Do you want that? Um, yeah, she'll take that, but put two gold pieces on Jack's eyes. I, I don't know what she practiced. If she may or may not need it, depending on her religion. Yeah. So, I've got the alcohol and the goblet, the letter, the compass, the monies, the rapier, the gun, uh, are on Jack. The eye patch is with me. The un Do we want to keep this potion? Or the deck? I'm keeping the deck. I'll oh, you the took the deck, okay. If you don't want to take the potion, I'll take the potion, but... Yeah, you can take the potion. I okay. have no idea what to do with it at this point, so... That's right. one mystery potion. Um... Yeah, and then whenever the cart gets back is when Polito well, will wrap her up in those bandages that have been soaking in the room. Or maybe she'll hold that until they get to the coast so it's not drying off. Yeah, yeah, that's what will happen. She'll keep it in the room until they get to the coast and then wrap her up there so it doesn't dry out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you, uh, um, want to talk to... I'll point to Zorag. Yeah, I can... I'll, I'll chat with him. I was gonna say, like, while they were talking and doing that, Zorag was looking for, like, a small barrel of, like, whiskey and just grabbing it and walking out the door. Zorag... Yeah. Have you walked out by this point? Or? Yeah, at this point, like, I would have already walked out. Okay. I'll go try to find him. Wait here with, with her, and I'll get the cart over here so we can take her. Yeah, fair enough. She will grab the cask of door and brandy and go outside to find Sorry. As you head to the door, 
you hear I sent you a message on where I was going. Gotcha. Okay. You um you almost get smacked in the face by the door. Doof. Her, the, they're back, they're back. I heard that they're back. It's not the time, Rumshu. Uh, wow. Jack didn't make you back with us. Well, where is she? She'll just turn and look over her shoulder. Oh. Uh. And he runs away. <laughs> <laughs> does he? Where does he run away to? Just like out of. Yeah. The... You, you hear him town. sobbing <laughs> and he runs um, he runs south of town. Okay, so he runs out of town. Shit. Well, all right. uh, <laughs> he runs away. Well, uh, he, he'll turn back. Well, he doesn't run like out of town, out of town. He runs south of the tavern and like sits behind a tree. Can I see him? Uh, Yeah. yeah he's I'll just... go over to him first. Okay. <laughs> And kneel down to him. Um, would you like to come with us when we lay her to rest? There. Yeah. We're going to be going to the coast, and I might have something for you to do once we're finished there. If you're okay with staying in that area. Rest of the want no the door. There was someone from her past, Flynn, that uh, goes unpunished for what he did to her. I just want you and Droop to look for anybody by that name, a half elf. I don't need you uh, to do anything outside of just finding where he is. Or they. Half elf. Uh... Uh, what's his name? Flynn. Flynn. Uh, okay, I can try. It's you and Drew. I don't know if Drew wants to come with. He seemed pretty gung ho about staying here, but if you can do that, just find as much information for me as you can. I'll join you after I'm done here. I have to stop at home first, get things done there, then I'll join you there. Okay. And he wipes the tears from his eyes. Um, you, can, you can wait inside if you'd like. I'm going to go find Zorig. Uh, is uh, is still in there? Jack? There. Yes, she's in there. How's still here. Okay. I'll get you before we leave then. you walk to find Zori. Ah, <sighs> Zorag. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> sugar. <laughs> you don't have to say where you went if you don't want to have others metagame it. Not that I think that they will, but what are you doing? I am sitting inside just on the floor looking at this destroyed place and just drinking straight out of the small barrel of this whiskey just gulping it down okay um if you want to look for zorag and dedicate some time to doing it uh you can roll a uh you can you can roll some sort of check you guys you would tell me what you want to roll to find him like um, tell me what you, know, you would do in order to I, locate him I know for sure she'd check the blacksmith cause I mean I don't think he would go there to be consoled but I know he's been there a few times <sighs> where do I think Zora would go uh god I have no freaking idea honestly so or the, and I'd check the shrine the shrine and the smithy is what I'd check for sure but otherwise I'd just do a perception check because if Zorik doesn't want to be there for for not Valia, for Jack's final journey, then who is she to stop him from going off? Uh, so yeah, I'll just do perception. Eighteen. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, 
Zorag, are you crying or being loud in any way? No, but I mean, I'm a pretty big fellow, so I mean... Yeah, but rain you're... Is it raining? It... I forgot to mention that, yeah, it got a little... Um, as you guys were coming into town, it got a little overcast, and there's a slight drizzle. It okay, doesn't... so would the ground be muddy at all? Uh, parts, for sure. If you found, if you got underneath somewhere that had enough of a roof, probably not. But like, you know, there's definitely open ceiling areas here. Well, I'm just talking about the location, things like footsteps and stuff. Oh, I'm I see. A big fellow, so. Uh, Valida, you do see uh, a track of footprints in the mud, leading up toward the Tresendar Manor. She'll follow them up there, see if she can see them. Uh, yeah, you eventually find Zorag sitting in his uh, sadness or anger, whatever it is, drinking a big thing of whiskey. She'll just sit down next to him and crack the cask of brandy and start drinking from it. I'm going to say I'm pretty much in silence for a good, like, 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Well, I did sit there in silence with them. If you want to, like, go to Jeb and see what Jeb's up to. Okay. Jeb. I was informed to sit here and watch the body, so that is what I'm doing. Um... Who has the compass? Well, it does. Folly it is? Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, you <laughs> sit and watch the body. Um, uh, eventually, after sitting there for like 10 minutes, 15 maybe, you hear the door creak open just a tiny bit. I'll look over to it. It's Rumshu. I will, um... Is there any more, uh, rum left after Valley to poured it all in a jar? I mean, in the tavern itself, there's plenty of rum, yeah. Okay. Um, I'll say that I got a, a, a glass of it. And I'll just... Hoist it up to Rumshu. So, uh, he like he approaches the the bar that she's laid on, but he like you can tell he's he's not he's trying to avoid co- eye contact with her. Mm. Um. So what happened? Well, we were about to go and find Gundren and she did and she attempted to take on someone who was doing something in there with him I don't really know it was the last doppelganger that we've been looking for and by the time the rest of us got there it was too late Pretty much it. I should have went. I should have been there. Well, you know, we all look back on choices and decide whether we should or should not have done them or done things differently. It doesn't matter in the end. You know, what matters is that we're here now and we just got to look forward. It's not to say that we can't undo certain things, but... Are we going to get her back? You know... I don't know. 
we'll see. And I'm going to pull out the orb and just put it down on the table. We'll see. What? What's that? You know, I don't really know. But I know that it likes me. I think that if we want to try and get her back, that's your best bet. Plus? Yep. But I, I don't know. You don't do anything with it. I have to do something with it. Okay. You want to keep a secret? Yeah. We're going someplace. I don't know exactly where it is. But there's going to be some sort of fire there. And I was tasked by someone to go and collect some water from it. And I decided not to do that. And I was then tasked by someone else to pull this and myself and throw them in the fire together. That sounds like it's gonna hurt. You know, I don't think it will. Where? How's that gonna bring back Jack? I don't know. I didn't get that far yet. But I've been told that if this happens, and if it goes well, then that might be an avenue down the road that we can work t towards. Okay. I'll keep a secret. No telling, Valiant, uh, especially. Okay. Cheers, mate. And I'll just start drinking with rum shoe. Okay, so is there anything in particular anybody wants to do? <laughs> well, if Zorik doesn't say anything after a long time, then she probably will just say, well, we're taking Jack to the sea to send her off. Would you like to join us? I'm sure she would have wanted you there. Zora kind of just grabs up his little barrel here that he has, this cask, and uh, kind of stands next to her and nods. All right, let's go get a cart. Get her out there. Um, yeah. So then she would have had to get a cart from... What's his name? Barthen. <laughs> Barthen. Uh, yeah, you guys head out of the Tresendar Manor down the hill, um, and you see off to the uh, to the left, um, you see a small uh, cemetery, and uh, the cart from earlier. Um, I see Sildar is just there with a the shovel digging digging um, yeah she'll walk up to Sildar and say mind if you take that or do you still need it You can take it. Thank you. 
um, do you want me to dig one for Jack? No, we're taking her where she belongs, where her spirit can truly rest. Or go on adventures. I don't know what pirate spirits do, in all honesty. <laughs> well, we're having the funeral tonight. Or oh, a ceremony, at least. Well, I leave my my blessings with them. We have to get Jack out to the sea. We can't really waste too long. How do you plan to... Do you need a boat? I think we can make something for her. While we're there. Okay. If you do change your mind, I think Bothan may have something. I'll check with him to see what he has. Uh, I guess she would check before getting the cart then, because instead of driving that thing all over town. Or I can send Zorak back with the cart while I go to check. Well, no, it's because we need it for the boat. I'll bring the cart over to check for the boat, see what it's like. Okay. Uh. So you're heading to Barthens? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you arrive at Barthens. Uh, he looks somber when you get there, and he's got his own glass of something on his table. Hey. Uh, Sildar mentioned you might have a boat we can use for a burial. Burial. Well, we'd be burning the boat, so it'd be something that you wouldn't want anymore. Yeah, I might have something laying around. All right. Um, then he goes out back behind his uh, his place, and he, after a few minutes, drags over this uh, this older wooden uh, paddle boat. that be perfect how much take it it's yours thank you condolences to the town as well and should put the boat up onto the cart and ride it back to the sleeping giant to pick up everybody there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you ride back at the Sleeping Giant. Jeb, Rumchu, I assume you come out, get on the wagon, uh, yeah. and ride off to the uh, to the coast. So. Opposite of your very first travels together, uh, you head up the Tribor Trail onto the, uh, I believe it is, you head up onto the high road and until you meet a part where it's not too far to get to what you see is a uh, break in the rocks of the of the coast and uh, with a nice sandy a small beach and at this time it's sun's starting to go down um, the rain however is clearing uh, and the waves are fairly calm for there of just being rain but it wasn't a big storm or anything so uh, 
yeah, you guys are now on the coast. Uh, finally, now we get the boat into the water with help of Zorag. If he does help or wants to. Yeah. Um, yeah, so just get it like right on the shore. And then she would get the bandages out of the rum and start wrapping Jack in those, except like up to so you can still see her face for the time being. Um, and then bring her over to the boat and lay her in it. Then just say, does anybody want to say anything before we send her out? While um, you do the wrapping and stuff, Jeb is tapping his new iron staff on the ground, and you see small bits of fire erupt around the staff that just and then end, and you see small flowers. A couple of um, like orange and red ones, and then a couple of white and yellow ones. And I'll just put them in the in the boat with her. I'll do it if no one else wants to. We can all have turns if we want, but you can start. Alright, no pressure then. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, I don't know. I feel like... You know, we all sort of came together at like I don't know about you guys but it was weird for me I didn't really know anyone I hadn't spoken to anyone in a while and like when I was growing up I always you know sort of was forced into certain roles and expectations that I was supposed to do and I kind of just followed into that for a while and then I met you all and we met Radoff and he was a total fucking dick and Jack was kind of like you know she showed me that I didn't have to listen to everyone else that it's okay to be different it's okay to have views that some people think are crazy or weird or dangerous and I feel like, you know, I like fire so much because it destroys shit. But you can also think of it as starting something new. Breaking something down that was not what it was supposed to be. And then you have room to make it better. Maybe that's what Jack's going to do, you know. Maybe she'll turn into something better. No, no. It's good having her here. Means a lot. And I'll just stand off to the side and I will keep casting Firebolt in my hand over and over again while I wait. Finally, I'll have to see if Zorag's going to say anything first. Zorag's going to stand at the, uh... <clears throat> Is that the, uh stern of this little boat mm -hmm. and uh after he sees jeb kind of get done talking he's just gonna look over i don't trust anyone but your eyes i needed to see them they remind me of who I once was. I'm sorry. My rage. I could have saved you. And he's gonna walk up and put this this cask of whiskey in the boat with her. And he is going to whisper Uh, Renatar is sorry. Can you just step back? Probably don't step forward then. From the first time I met Jack, 
I questioned why Gundren had asked her to come with us. But I soon found out why. She may have had a different way of going about doing things, but... She was out to do the best she could for everyone. I know I was hard on her and chastised her a lot, but I hope she knew it wasn't because I thought she was doing something wrong or didn't think well of her. I just knew that she was good and was destined for great things I just wanted to be there to help her but the best we can do now is just to live on in her memory and keep moving forward uh, and then with that she'll take out her goblet and Jack's and fill them with the rum from that Jack had and then offer it to Jeb and Zoreg. I'll pull out my own goblet. I will as well. Uh, Rumshu waddles over to the boat. Um, still not really making eye contact, but he slips in a bottle of rum under her or by her side. And he says... They were my first friend. And then uh, <laughs> he waddles back. Um, in For the audience, we see um, a shot from afar of this group uh, huddled around the, the boat. And it pans to a woman in the tree line with pale silver hair and a uh, crescent moon necklace around her neck. Um, And she seems to be watching the happenings. just a moment (laughs) (laughs) and sister Garielle by her side Um, this is where they are you say you knew this Jack yeah I did Years ago. But they need a moment. Sh- but should I? It's kind of my fault. It's not your fault. Thanks for catching me on the path. I'll meet you back there. Yeah. She steps forward up to the group, trying to not be super quiet, like enough to for the group to notice. If nothing else is happening, uh, Probably don't put Jack's ja- uh, Jack's goblet into the boat with her, and finish wrapping the wrappings around her face, and push the boat out. And as she does, raises the goblet as it floats out. Fully, like she'll walk into the water a little ways too, getting her getting her armor with. <laughs> Do you speak up or anything? I assume that was pointed at me. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know she, if she froze uh, or something. <laughs> no. She, uh, she goes. Uh, could you 
Wait a second, please. Hearing that, she'll grab the boat and turn to look. She steps out to the water, leans over the boat, and looks down at the face and reaches up and gently runs her fingers down her cheek and she goes, You stupid idiot. She le she'll lean over and press a kiss uh, to her forehead. It's like, <sighs> Say hi to your dad, Jackie. And then she'll step out of the water. And just it. wait. You're pushing out, you said? Yeah, I pushed out. And then she's raising the goblet to toast. Okay. I will also raise my goblet and I'll say, Cheers to Jack. Hope we see her again someday. Cheers. And she'll drink from the goblet. Drink up me hard, is yo ho, and I'll take his wig. I'll do the same thing. And as soon as the boat gets far enough out, I'll conjure another fireball and I'll chuck it at the boat. I'm not mean enough yet. It hits, and uh... <laughs> <laughs> I was really thinking roll, about it. Roll. <laughs> um, and it Zorak ignites. Bad him, he gets mad. <laughs> <laughs> It, it ignites and slowly begins to burn um, until it hits the rum bottle and it starts to burn a lot quicker. And then it hits a cask of whiskey and it's a small explosion. <laughs> um, I would say the cask was mostly empty by the time I put it <laughs> But there's still the fumes. <laughs> yeah, there's a small explosion. Um, She's accustomed to those. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but the boat sails off to sea aflame. And, uh... Valida. Yes. In your pocket, you feel a slight vibration. I will grab for the vibration. <laughs> Uh, it's the compass, and it's. You look at it, and it starts to spin. Just continue to look at it. And then it stops, and it points out to Jack. It's a strange thing. Can I glean anything from it pointing out to Jack? Probably not. Okay. Besides, that's, that's not what it was doing before? Yeah. If it just stays pointing eventually... Whatever you want to imply, yeah. you can imply yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But if it doesn't move from that, she'll eventually pocket it. Very confused. <laughs> After we all have a moment, I will turn to the new figure. All right, so who the fuck are you? <laughs> Nissa, if you want to describe what your character looks like. <laughs> oh, boy. But I got tears on my face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Take it, Chris. All right. <clears throat> all right, Snipple. All right, so yeah, she's got the pale silver hair. Uh, her eyes are light gray. She's clearly a a half elf from uh, her coloration. Her, she's got like the pale, like light rosy lips. She's got a crescent, a uh, crescent moon choker around her neck that's in a thin chain. Uh, around her shoulders is like a pale blue sort of hoodie that's attached to a leather vest, and uh, with a dark gray undershirt that kind of goes off the shoulders, and. Uh, with the sleeves going down just to about her elbows. She's got dark fingerless gloves on, wearing dark blue shorts. She's got a kind of a half skirt. She's got pockets on one side, a short sword, a short sword scabbard, uh, 
and a short bow hooked onto the belt. She's got dark gray leggings on and uh, black boots that kind of go up to her, her knees. And uh, in her boots themselves, uh, you can see the handle of a dagger sticking out of one and uh, some the ends of some arrows sticking out of the other. And she just looks over at Jeb and just kind of gives a small little chuckle while wiping her eyes. I need to wipe my eyes. <sighs> so it's like, <sighs> I'm Aelin, Aelin Edermath. I knew Jack from a few years ago. <laughs> That's weird, because she never mentioned you. Oh, yeah. It's because I was just a fling for a few months. To be fair, who has she flighty. mentioned from her past? Yeah, has she mentioned right. uh, Has she mentioned a guy named Flynn? Because I tried to warn her against that I guy. I don't think she said by name, but she has said she hates a half-elf. Yep. Guy mutinied her. Like, we... I met her at port over in. over on the coastline, and uh, she's. she was fun. But, uh. she had to go out. I tried to warn her against Flynn, and it was just. not. Just a short while ago, she washed up on town and looked horrible, and I kind of tried to get her inland to cope, but she didn't recognize me at the time, and I don't blame her. It's had been a little while. But yeah, uh, I'm Aelin Edermath. I'm a friend of Sister Gariel. Nice to meet you. I'm Valeda. It's nice to meet you, Valeda. And I'm... I'm really sorry that you lost her, but... She's always been a... bit of a hothead. I had to drag her out of a few bar fights myself. Well... Thank you for sending her our way, apparently. It sounds like she wouldn't have been here without you. Did she make good use of the rapier? Yes. I let her steal it off of me. <laughs> she had mentioned that she procured a few of her weapons from others. Yeah. The oh, wow. sun has pretty much sunken below the the sea line at this point. Well, do we want to make camp here for the night? Ride back in the morning? Yeah, probably. It's probably what she'd want anyway, you know? Uh, I know that we just put all the alcohol on the boat, but does anyone have any more? <laughs> I will pull out a bottle of rum that I bought specifically for spitting fire that I have not touched. <laughs> and I will just plonk it on the sand. Okay. Uh, then we will drink tonight in her honor. Sounds like a plan to me. Are you sticking around for that, uh, alien? May, um, I would like to stick around. I was asked by Sister Garielle to go over to Vandalin for, for her to help out with uh, a few things, but I think they involve you guys anyway. May I? Yeah, that's fine. I'd like to hear some more stories. I have a few to share. <laughs> If that's okay with you two, three, Ramshu. I'm fine with that. Yeah. 
Zorag just oh. nods. Well, have a seat. Tell us a tale. Nice. So, <laughs> you all set up your tent on the beach. Uh, your tents. A little campfire. Uh, you share stories of Jack and... Rumshoot takes a lot of notes. It doesn't make sense. There's like little stick figures and stuff, but you know, they make sense to him, I guess, maybe. Um... And uh, before you go to bed, you look to the sky behind you and see these lanterns starting to rise from the tree line far off in the distance, but flickering and floating. Uh, there appears to be... Uh, there, there's a handful of uh, just lanterns flying off. Uh, seeing this, Valida will stand up and she still has her armor on. She'll just take her mace and hit it against her chest twice and watch the lanterns fly off. Zorag will notice this and stand up next to her and just take a sip from his goblet. Jeb will... Stand up, and I will count however many lanterns there are, because I've got a really good passive perception, and I will shoot that many firebolts just straight up into the air. Gotcha. Okay. Well, Elena's gonna stand up and uh, do a color spray uh, spell into Jeb's uh, firebolts to make them like almost appear like fireworks. Oh, cool. Yeah. Alright. So, with that, you guys bed down for the night, level up to level 5. Yay! <laughs> One good thing comes out of this. The <laughs> only... <laughs> we will take a break. And when we return... We'll get to see some more of Nissa's new character and uh, see what's what's going to happen now. What class are you? I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> see you soon. See you soon.
Welcome back, everybody. Now that the depression is over, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Depression's never over. It'll never, it'll never be over. Yeah, you're right. Wow. You that's all wake up in the morning. Actually, I gotta change this to say level five. Level five. Congratulations. Thank you. You get your long rest. You wake yeah. up in the morning. Um, what do you do? Um, so Volleyder will take a a Lynn will say a Lynn a a Lynn and uh, she'll say, um, can you describe this Flynn to me? Uh. Yeah, yeah, Rumshoes are next. <laughs> it's like, oh, hello. Um, Hi. well, he's. A half elf, and I need to open up uh, the Jack Sparrow window again for a minute. <laughs> but yeah, he's a half elf, about six feet tall. He's blonde. He's got scars on his shoulders, and he's got a scar down one eyebrow. Okay, that's got one eyebrow. <laughs> he would be actually piling uh jack's ship uh the night lake oh. robert's doing that because he mutinied jack uh and took over so basically it kicked her off the boat from being a captain That's not nice against that her thing. terms <laughs> no he is not nice at all he's very much a jerk. Thank you. Well, he's he's still got his come. But yeah, sure, um, his his last name is um, Kepi. Kepi. His last name is Kepi. Cap. Sorry about that. Cap. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Very subtle, Remshu, thank you. <laughs> this is a great, it's just taking notes, it's not even Remshu. <laughs> yeah. oh. I just like to think Remshu's sitting there with the parchment, just writing it all down. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, well, thank you. She'll Clip turn... that, everyone. Clip that. <laughs> She'll kneel down to Remshu and just be like, all right, go ask around, see what you can find out about him, where he's at. And meet me back here when you do. I'll come as soon as I can. So just wait here for me. All and right. I'll wait here for you if you aren't back yet. Where should I ask? Where did you say that uh, this from? Neverwinter. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay, I didn't yes. know if, you, if yeah. you remembered or not. Yeah, head up to the ports around Neverwinter. Yeah, it's like, okay. uh, l last I heard, he tends to port in Neverwinter. Not too often, but he does go there for supplies and making a mess of the place. Oh, actually, roll me a. Roll me a. Um, hmm, how much would you know about Flynn, Aelin? No, a bit. Think? Roll me a history check. All right. You know Dang. that he had he hadn't been seen in a while since stealing Jack's ship, so he could be anywhere. Uh, but you would actually so assume that he might not be in Neverwinter because that's where Jack last was, and um, well, you don't think he would go back there. But uh, well, people would know of him in Neverwinter, so you could still do that and get information. Uh, there are some people who know him in Neverwinter because he used to go to port frequently uh, with Jack uh, some years ago. Haven't seen him for a while though but might find some other sailors who have encountered him. Okay. Um, does Neverwinter uh, get along with uh, goblins? I'm gonna venture no. Do they? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Probably not the most loved, but yeah, I, I, they're 
not the most loved, but it's a bit of a culture pot. Just try and stay out of sight as much as possible. Think about things before you interact with people. Okay. And uh, when when do you want me to come back here? Where's Neverwinter? <laughs> is is Neverwinter the north of us right now or to the south? It's to the north. It's the north. It's the north. Actually, I will meet you in Neverwinter. I've been there many times, so. But it's Neverwinter. I mean, yes. Yeah. I'll, I'll meet you in Neverwinter. You go there and search for any information you can get on this guy or any information on people who would be willing to take us to see if need be. What about Zerub? Do you think Zerub would be good on this journey with us? Because I can bring him be. Um, or he can stay in Vandalin if he'd rather. Up to you. I'll, how about I go back with the first and then I'll talk to Droop. That's fine. Okay. Alright, let's... I guess we can head off. Unless anybody else has anything they want to do, she'll look over to the rest of the group. Is Zorag even awake right now? I don't know, I feel like that's up to the DM seeing us out drank nearly an entire cask of whiskey and kept drinking last night. <laughs> Roll me a constitution, uh, safe. This constitution's gonna be lit. <laughs> Fourteen. Uh, you're very sluggish. You're awake, but you're, like, not having any of it. <laughs> you're, like, barely awake. Hung over, if you will. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, what? Oh. Just lay down the cards or I can try to get your head somewhere. It's not going to jostle too much. Okay. <laughs> it's like, fa I like a walk up to the, walk up to the cart, I stand up on top of it, and I just face plant. Just <laughs> pow, right into the back. I will also. Aelin is going to go up to him and uh, offer her water skin. It's like, do you want some water? I assume he's passed out again. <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah. reach my hand up like that. <laughs> it put it in a hand. <laughs> Start drinking it and just hand it back. <laughs> okay. It's <Yeah>. empty. <laughs> okay. Zero. I'm just gonna like, stumble out of the tent and I'm just gonna walk up to Alien and grab both sides of her shirt and I'll pull her close and be like, "Your chickens was so brave." Last night, when we went to the <laughs> fucking castle, they fought so well. Was this part of the stories that uh, that Aelin was <laughs> shared with, or <laughs> she had no idea? Would you have shared that I'd story play. last night? Would we have shared this story about <laughs> what we? I doing? assumed it was like you sharing stories back and forth about Jack. Um, so probably, you probably would have had an idea. Like, the chickens were there. I gently pat his shoulder. I'm sure they were very, very brave. They were so brave. <laughs> I loved him. Was I introduced to Sticky last night? Sure. I was like, like, uh, I'm sure Sticky was very brave too. I'm so glad that uh, he's still uh, supporting you. He's my best buddy in the world. <laughs> Yeah. That's good. Jeb, are you still drunk? No. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. I drank a lot last night. <laughs> yes, you, you are did. You're a small person, yes. I'm going to climb up on the uh, on the cart, or attempt to, and then just sit down on top of Zorag and just sprawl out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As you guys head back to Fandolin, you take those of you who aren't face first sleeping in the back of the cart uh, take one last glance at the waves crashing against the the beach and um, the boat not in sight anymore any longer um, yeah just you take it in one last time and head in Linda Fandolin as as she's heading back and seeing the waves 
Polydor will just say to herself, the waves hit the shore, they return to the sea. Aelin just kind of whips her head over at Valiadaz, like, did she tell you about that? It was mentioned. She comes from a line of sailors, or she claims her dad and her granddad were pirates. She was a bit of a pirate herself. Oh, I know she was a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> she was very much a pirate. She was always still in that booty or what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's also quite the flirt. But, uh, I'm gonna. Aelin is gonna look out to the sea one last time and say, in, in Elvish. Oh, thank God we still have an Elvish speaker in the three. I thought we lost <laughs> her. <laughs> She's gonna say in Elvish, uh, uh, I hope you. I hope you don't sink down to JV Jones. So does, oh. that, does that make you a pirate then, or? No, I worked as a bartender and a few other jobs. She was fond of bartenders. Oh yeah, especially since I would give her some free rum once in a while when she hustled out some hooligans. Okay, so you guys reach back to Phandalin. Um, unscathed. Uh, people are... Uh, there's less people out than there has been recently. You know, when you first take, took care of the Red Brands, everybody was out and about um, excited, and there was an energy to the town again. Um... It seems like it's, it almost seems like it's gone back to before that time when the red brands were on the loose and uh, there's only a couple people scattered here and there throughout town. Uh, I guess we bring the cart back first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you bring the cart back. Aelin is going to Aelin's <laughs> going to glance down the path towards the Edomath uh, orchard and go um I need to go say hi to someone or they're gonna never let me hear the end of it if I don't say I'm in town fair enough did, did you want to back to his friend alright um I go I go to the cart and I kind of gently pat Jeb and pat Zorag's shoulders. I was like, guys, we're back in Phandalin. Duh? Mad Flash, no. Okay. You two ready Maybe to get back at it? No. Do you want some nice fresh apple juice? I feel like a shot of whiskey would help more than apple juice. <laughs> yeah, I agree with him a little bit. <laughs> you can come to the sleeping giant with me or uh Ewan. Aelin. Right. I have a question, Valida. Yes. Is this our cart? No. Why don't we just buy a fucking cart? <laughs> Where are we we're gonna always keep lugging it? a car around, you know? Why, where are we going to keep it? We can just keep borrowing this one. I don't want to keep borrowing it because we've got to return it. This is well, just buy you one. You want to pay for it? How much is a cart? Uh, go barter with Barthen. Alright, I'll screen. go do that. <laughs> I feel like... I'll, I'll walk into Barthen's while everyone else does that shit. <laughs> I want to take up the time. <laughs> Um, roll me a persuasion check. <laughs> Can I guide myself? No. Oh. 
You're too hungover. Oh, man. It would just be one of those where, like, you're standing in the middle of the store, like, trying to convince somebody. Magic. And you're like... <laughs> <laughs> you magic your face, and they're like, uh... What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Um... Okay, we'll talk about price later. That's fine. That's totally <laughs> it's not. Fine. It's not in that. Jeb owns a cart. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you have enough to cover it. So it's not really a big deal. I'll tell you at the end of the game. Uh, okay. So who do we go with? Let's go with Aileen. Aileen is walking down the very familiar path uh, to the orchard. Yeah, and you, you know, it's it's been a little bit since you've been here last, um, but not much has changed as you look around. It's still the same old, old ranch style house with a, uh, 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 like a very faded orange, um. I can't think of the right words right now. The the things on the roof. Shingles. <laughs> Shingle. I keep wanting to say shackle. I'm like, it's. I know it's not shackle. Oh, so uh, close. With the super old shackle, orange shackle. See, I said it now. Shingle roof. Shingles. Um. And yeah, you hear in the back, uh, like the sound of, <gasps> and then a. Doof, noise and it just repeats every few seconds you hear it she goes around back and goes oh uncle oh Aileen you're here she rushes up and gives him a big hug what are you doing in town Sir Gariel uh asked me to uh, come up and so here I am <laughs> that's great news you look behind him uh, or past him and there's just like so much firewood <laughs> with all the firewood uncle <laughs> you know the winter's coming and all don't worry about it. True. You so, know, I do ha have, you know, I do have that spare room down in Neverwinter. You're more than welcome to uh, let me host you once in a while. <laughs> of course, yeah. I'll have to stop by sometime. Uh, how about you come in? I Tell me stories. <laughs> I came in with uh, a new group of friends um they were saying goodbye to um you remember a few years ago i told you i was seeing someone but i didn't give you their name yeah um well it was that it was jack i was they were giving her a send-off I you did get to meet her while she was in town. Um, I heard of her passing, and I'm sorry, Aelin. It's okay. She's... She'll always be here, and I can always look out to the sea and think of her. But... But yeah, so I traveled in with uh, their friends... Uh, with her friends, and, uh, they're, they're gonna, I think they're gonna be okay, but, uh, I got the impression that other people didn't make it either. Can you tell me who? Mm. Yes, um, uh, unfortunately, Randolph and Pearson, Lenine. I heard they fought to the very end, and uh, but 
and they fell. Aelin is just gonna hug her uncle again. I'm sorry. But at least they don't have to suffer. <laughs> and, uh, he just puts his arm around you. So, come on in. I'll make you some apple cider. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. I go in with him. Cool. So, he uh, he makes you some apple cider. We'll cut on over to Valida and Zorag. Is Zorag with Valida? Yeah. Yeah. Just hung over as shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Just walk back into Sleeping Giant to deliver rum shoe back to Drew. Um, and when she gets it, she had put her hair back up into the tight pony in the morning but as she sits down at the bar let Zora get his hair at the dog uh, she will take it out and start braiding it to have two braids on the sides that come and connect in the back one braid before she just had a ponytail before and now it's the she's just making it so there's two braids on the sides that go into one ponytail yeah okay And just sitting there waiting for everybody else to rejoin because she has plans for how to find Gundren now. Hmm. So it's uh, just me and Valida. Uh, at the bar, Sorry. there's a there's a handful of people. Um, trying to think of who would be there, but <clears throat> it's pretty early in the morning. Yeah, there's, but again, there was just a few people. Who, that's true. It's a small town, and a few people passed away, so yeah, it's a rough morning. Um, and there's another tavern. <laughs> yeah. But Anyways, still before 12 p.m., right? <laughs> yeah. PM. There, Damn it. There's only a handful of people in here, but there's there's some in here. Uh, I forgot the question now. <clears throat> just who was all in here? Oh yeah, it's just you two, Grista and some random patrons and Drew and Rumshu. <laughs> I'm going to take this shot of this whiskey here kind of catch my bearings I'm going to put the glass like the, the shot glass back down on the table I'm just going to look at Volley and say uh, we will kill this whatever <clears throat> and like I'm kind of getting mad about it and then I just kind of stop and I'm like, we will kill those who haunt her. Yes. Yeah. Well, you... I assume you killed the one that actually killed her. Yes, anybody associated with... We have to head back that way to hopefully track them. I might have a way to. But the best place to start is where we left off. Another question. Yes. How do you feel about dragon hunting? I mean, I'm down to try anything once. Did you have dragon hunting in mind? That green one has been on my mind. Yeah, I mean, I'll go with you if that's what you want to do. You've helped me so much I can return the favor I don't know how Jeb will feel about it it's up to you but he doesn't have to know that's true but first those that are responsible will pay yes I'm with you Zoreg been with me this whole way Uh, was like, <laughs> yeah. Jam, were, were you <laughs> heading to pick up Aelin or are you heading straight to Sleeping Giant? I don't know why you would have went to pick up Aelin, but I just figured I'd throw that out to you. Neither. Okay. I'm going to buy the cart and then I'm going to find a carpenter. A carpenter. Yep. Uh, 
Okay. Did you buy horses for that cart too? <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you you would have had to. <laughs> Can't you ride it? Bullet, I mean, it's a big it, you got. it depends on. Okay, so what size cart do you want? Is Double it just like? Not. Is it like more like a wagon that somebody can pick up and roll with? <laughs> or is it like? Oh, we had this conversation before, didn't we? Um, whatever or... size the one that we just were using was. So that was like a two horse. Two car. horse is good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you got that, um, and you're heading to a carpenter. Heading to a carpenter. Yep. Cool. Uh, Barthen points out where a carpenter is in town. There's actually not a carpenter in town, according to the module. So I don't know. It, you you go you go to the you go to a wherever the fuck he pointed out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No one built these damn houses. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, you do notice that they're mostly cobble, but there is there's some there are some wood houses here and there, and some are like wood, uh, stone and wood. But yeah, there's there's a carpenter. You find him. I just want to make a couple modifications to the cart. Um, I want to cut out little holes in the side and stick them on the side in different places to like reinforce, but leave slits in them in the sides. Um, and I want to make the front, instead of being flat, come to a point, and I want there to be two, like, or just one, we'll just put one, like, log sticking out the top of it. What? <laughs> so... I want to talk to this carpenter more. <laughs> I, I want to, I want to make, so can you do that on, like, just stick some, I'll help you if you want, it's fine. What are you saying? So, I've got this cart. Right, and I want to cut some squares out of the sides and then reinforce the parts that aren't cut out. And then I want the front of it to come more to a point that I can stand <laughs> on between the horses. And then I want there to be a log coming out of the middle of it. Like a gladiator? Nope, not like a gladiator <laughs> at all. Nope. Just draw him a picture, man. <laughs> I'll draw him a picture. A minor illusion the idea that I have. Oh, that's fancy. Okay. Um, yeah, and he'll, he'll get to work on it, and um, uh, how much would something like that cost? Go wild, Grace. I don't have that much money. Ten gold. Okay. I have that. How much was the cart? I don't know yet. 15. I gotta look it up. But does that include horses? I don't no, know. No, that's just the cart. I Big think horses are only... Two and horses are not cheap. Jeb can be the horse. Jeb might not have been able to afford any of this. So, <laughs> a, a draft horse is 50 gold pieces per Oh, horse. shit. <laughs> Do you have... I'll Do lend I you have some. 50 gold? No. <laughs> Follow um, will lend you money if you need it. At the moment, I just wanna I just wanna do the cart. We'll focus so on horses later this, when I can. This is get what money. happened. Barthen's a nice guy. You've done a lot for the town. So this is my fault for getting ahead of myself. He offered for you to borrow the horses while you because you bought the cart. He offered to That's let you fine. borrow the horses while you get the cart fixed up the way you want. Um and you're temporarily temporarily renting the horses. Sweet. Works for me. Yeah. But the cart is yours. <clears throat> That's all I do. I go to the carpenter. I don't know how long it's going to take for him to do that. But however long it takes. It's how long it takes. Come back in a day. I don't know. I lost the voice. Old rum shoe? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I'll be back. I've got to return the horses, though. Can you paint it like a dark brown? With flames a on the side? Brown? <laughs> a dark brown. You know, yeah. like the color of... Shit. <laughs> okay. The paint flames on the side. I want flames. <laughs> I'm not a painter. It'll cost you extra. Okay, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. What's your name? Uh. <laughs> I'm doing this to be spiteful now. 
Darfin. D A R F I N. Dolphin. Nice to meet you, Dolphin. I'm Jeb. No, I'll be back Darfin. tomorrow. <laughs> what was that? I can't I hear think you. You need a hearing aid. <laughs> Those don't exist. <laughs> That's a trumpet. Well, yeah, it's a horn. Yeah, the ear trumpet. <laughs> yep. I'll, I'll return the horses and I'll go find the other two. Oh, he'll let you borrow them for the day or rent them. I mean. I can't take him anyway. They're stuck to my car. I can't ride a horse. I probably can ride a horse, but I don't know what I'm going to do with two of them. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. He actually has somewhere on site. Pretty much everybody here, not everybody, but most businesses own horses because that's the primary way of like delivering things and stuff. So he mm -hmm. has his own little stable that he can just put them in for now. Horsepower. And then you walk across to what? Sleeping Giant? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you you come into Volleyden Zorag doing the thing. What? Oh, stop <laughs> doing the thing in front of me. Doing their thing. <laughs> is what I said. Different than the thing. I heard the thing. You did say the thing. <laughs> That's what I like, huh? Just my accent. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. Did you buy your cart? Yeah, I did. I might need some more money though. Just like I can't know. buy horses. What are you gonna do with horses? Put them on the cart. And then? Drive the cart around places. All the time? Yeah. What are you gonna feed them? Straw. Horses are a lot of responsibility. I Are you sure you're know. ready for them? How to take care of animals. I've got sticky. It's true. He has someone yeah. who survived this whole time. It's like he has pot armor or something. Uh, what's it what's a pot armor? <laughs> oh nothing. Um yeah, just ask me if you need money, I can give you some. I've got plenty. I do. We'll we'll discuss it later. I don't know how much horses are. I'm not good with money. Sounds good. Oh, we're just waiting on uh Aelin, then we can head back out to the castle to continue our search. Okay. We'll wait. <laughs> Okie dokes. Aelin, what would you do after spending uh, some time with Darren, your uncle? She's going to uh, kind of glance outside and see where the sun is in the sky. It's like, well, I should probably get back to them. I need to check in on a few things that uh, Sister Gariel asked me to uh, do, so I'll check in with you when I get back, Uncle Darren? Oh, uh, of course, yeah. Make sure to come back. And, and you make sure to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, you notice he's just got mm -hmm. massive bags under his eyes. <laughs> She'll go up to him and say, go and take a nap. If I see someone in town that I know I know helps you out, I'll send them your way in two hours. So go take a nap. He'll, uh, he'll head up to his room. She'll let herself out after stealing another... After uh, slipping another uh, cup of cider and head over to uh, the direction of the Stone Hill Inn, because I think the last time she was here, the sleep. I don't know if the Sleeping Giant was there. No, Sleeping Giant was there. Okay, yeah, then she'll head towards the Stone Hill Inn and Sleeping Giant, because she doesn't know which one that they went into for the bar, because it. Right. Um, uh, as you head to the Stonehill Inn, you are approached by Sister Garielle, who's uh, who's looking, you know, worse for wear. Just she's a little beat, like bruised and stuff from the the fight earlier, and. Uh, 
obviously she's had a long night as like one of the only people of faith like faith leaders in the town so she's probably been talking to people like all night um trying to comfort people and whatnot and she says uh so sorry to interrupt whatever you're doing but i i assume you were sent here to aid well you requested me didn't you oh ah uh, yeah i i requested help uh, I wasn't sure who they would send. Okay. Yes, I am here to help. I only have a few details. Would you be able to catch me up before I continue to meet up with the group uh, with Valida, Jeb, and Zorak? Yes. Um, it's good that you've met them now, because I've actually kind of looped them in uh, on this already. Um... Well, as you know, we're looking for the spell book of Bow Gentle. And our only lead is to ask Agatha, the ghost of a elven woman uh, who resides in the old town of Conaberry. Conaberry. All right. She was the one that's very vain, right? Yes. All right. So, if you were to go, make sure to bring those others with you. They seem very capable. Yes, and I will be asking about the spell book of Bojangle. Bojangle. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't finish writing it down. Thank you. Please, Sister Gariel. Could you do something for me? What is it? Go have a nap. You and Uncle Darren just look so tired. I know I know that was a hard night. I gently take one of her hands. It's like, but please, even though you take care of others, you need to take care of yourself too. No, oh, you're you're right. You're right. I'm no use to anybody like this. That's right. And thank you. Thank you for asking for help, even though if it wasn't me directly. But well, no if worries. It mean counts for any. I'm, I'm glad they chose you. So. Okay, well, it's time for me to get that sleep then. Please. And if you if you do have a chance after your nap, can you make sure? Uncle Darren doesn't break his back. He has a lot of firewood. Uh, he's still probably upset. Yeah, I just came from him and I told him to go take a nap as well, so... <laughs> okay. But yeah, I give her a quick hug and then I had continue heading towards uh, the bar pub. Okay. Yep. You walk into the sleeping giant tap house and you see uh, those familiar faces you met last night at Jack's funeral. Oops, that's not where you guys are supposed to be. My vision <laughs> is returned. <laughs> Okay. You are all now gathered at this table that you've picked out. Uh, what, uh, what would you like to do? So, I think I have a way to find Gundren. We just have to get back to the castle. It's, I mean, in all honesty, it's a long shot, but it's the only thing I have right now. 
What is it? I can locate objects and he had like jewelry in his beard, right? That I saw as he was getting pulled. Mm-hmm. I can try to locate some of the jewelry that was in his beard and we can go from there to find him. Oh, I forgot. Sorry, you guys. It's been a long day. I found this and I'll drop a bag of 220 silver on the table. This was in the same room that we last saw him in. I don't know if it's useful for anything. I mean, you can hold on to it for now and use part of it to pay for your horses. What's the conversion rate? It's 10 silver, 1 gold, so that's 22 gold. Wait, that's not right. Yeah, it is. 22 gold. Right. Okay. Put it back. I'm distracted by cat butt, sorry. So yeah, we can we can locate um, Zorag. If we go back there, are you going to be cool? Yes, but I will literally kill anything that is hostile. Pretty much anything that I believe lives there will die. Okay. Sounds fun. That's a question. Are we leaving that owl bear in there by itself to die, or? I just worry that if we let it out, it'll just turn on us if we don't do it correctly. I don't think I can speak to an owl bear. It's a bit big. We can try old fashioned meat. It's a long shot. I think that's something we don't need to add to our plate. As much as why I would don't? Like it out. Well, if we're there, why? If we decide to do so, Zorag can just, you know punch a wall down or something and we'll just go until it finds the outside we'll 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 be stealthy about it you know all right let's but yeah yeah we can go back unless anybody else any other plans on how to find him well uh... there is um I think Sister Gabrielle might have mentioned to you, but uh, possibly Agatha? That was also in my mind. I didn't want to use her as a first option, though. No, not as a first option. It could be, like, secondary or third option. Yeah, if this doesn't work, that would be my next choice. So? Shall we? Back to the castle. My cart's not ready. We can walk, it's not that far. Okay. I will climb back up on Zorak and just <laughs> sit myself down. I do not fight this. <laughs> at all. <laughs> nice. Yeah, we head out. Oh, I, I make sure Rumshu has figured out what he's doing first. Um, are there, uh, are you sure you don't want me to stick around for now? Like, go with you? I don't want anybody else to die. We should be fine. I think this will be the most use. In her, in her own mind, she thinks, do I really think he's going to be able to do it on his own? And will he not die? <laughs> Um, as much as I would like to get information ahead of time, it might be too big of an ask to send a goblin somewhere he doesn't know that's possibly hostile. And I, I might have some more things coming, so yes, yeah, stick around here for now, I guess. But start practicing your sea legs. Practice my sea legs. Yeah, get ready to. You mean be... like go on a boat? Yeah, we probably end up on a boat at some point. Okay. I might know a few pirates in that area. I've been through there a couple times and been to a couple taverns. I'm not like on good terms with them. I just know them. We'll see. Ah, 
wish that was something Jack knew when she was alive. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. Let's. Uh, we're we're heading out to go try to find Gundren again. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. She'll head out. Uh, I do want to find Sildar on our way out, if we can. Like, stop by the town hall. Sure, yeah. On your way out, you stop at the town hall, uh, walk on in, and Sildar's, uh, Sildar's talking with the clerk. She'll pull the sword off of her back. It's like, Sildar, I found this in the castle. Had Ooh. familiar markings on it, so I don't know if it did or not. Well, thank you. That's yeah, that's my sword. Oh, there's there was also some armor and bow. Um, they're still at the castle, though. I forgot to tell you all. That's quite all right. I'll head out and go grab it when I get the chance. Also. Uh, a. I think we found this out, but I could I probably assume it. A relic that we found from the Trincendar Manor. Possibly a family sword that Jack was using. I don't think any of us can use it. It's at the Sleeping Giant. I don't know if the town wants it for any kind of history thing or. <clears throat> Thank you. Yes, I'll bring it back here at once. Unless you uh, want does, it. Uh, does uh, Aelin remember Soldar? Oh, you, you, uh, from this town? you recognize him. He's not from Phandalin, but you rec like you recognize seeing him, um, in the tavern in Neverwinter. You know, like working. What? While I was working. Uh, yeah, yeah. It would have been like seven days ago now. Eight. Okay. My cat is literally rolling a die. <laughs> what is it? What is it? Why are they rolling? She's just that's rolling right. it over and She's over and over around. again. <laughs> we'll wait for it to stop and see what it ends on. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I wanted to do here, so I would head out after that. I do want to do... One thing. Roll it one more time. I want to eight. fence <laughs> this art that I have. That's worth. It's, I have in my notes art worth ninety gold. Can I fence that somewhere for ninety gold so I can pay for fucking horses? <laughs> yeah, sure. Roll me. Um, how would you go about selling this painting? One of a kind painting here, painted by the <laughs> amazing. <check>. Okay. <laughs> Seventeen. Okay. Um, let me. Kitty, what are you doing? Making the cat roll. <laughs> uh, you get that you get an offer of seventy-five gold for it. I'll take it. That's fine. Cool. It's good enough for me. Okay, that's all. Dude, I'm going to lose that die. <laughs> it's no longer in the tray. It's all the way over there now. <laughs> okay. Um, so, you are all heading to the castle? Yes. Cool. Uh, we are going to do uh, a quick roll session just to see how successful you are. Uh, you guys have been here before, so you guys have advantage on your rolls. Uh, Do you mean how... to keep the tavern music up? What? Do you mean to ca uh, keep the tavern music up? Yeah, we'll, we'll switch it over. Uh, but anyways... Um... I'm sorry, I only asked that because before you realized that the tavern music was still going on on one <laughs> session. <laughs> yeah. It's throw you somewhere else. Where should we throw him? Go ahead and um, 
Oh, wait, no, that's the sad music now, though. Darn it. <laughs> no, we're sad again. <laughs> no, we're sad. So you guys are traveling down the Goblin Trail. You get to the Damn. point, to the cave, where you've been a thousand times, and now's the part where you go on foot. So, Or where you go off into the woods, because you guys are on foot the whole time. Um, roll me whatever. Are you guys like trying to locate things that you recognize are you things to recognize if there's any because they said they brought the carts up to the castle to carry the bodies right yeah so we'll be looking for like any cart marks or just any like large groups moving through because we brought a few people through there i'm okay. also gonna ask any nearby wildlife if they know where the castle is as long as they're small beasts okie okay, oh, dokes so sharp first roll me a survival check 14. Equal roll me a perception check. Is that with, with advantage, advantage right? right? Sure, yeah. Oh, what did I just roll up? I'm Tommy, sorry, I did not. <laughs> Tommy, that. there was. <laughs> roll the damage. My, my mouth clicked. Roll the, oh, no. Oh, don't do this, Grace. Roll damage. I'm talking to a bird my or something. I my keyboard <laughs> as I was moving it. <laughs> clicked you, on the like, for some reason. <laughs> Zorak's just walking. He just throws his boomerang. He's like, why the fuck did I do that? And you hear... <laughs> and you go over to retrieve your boomerang, and there's now a dead goblin in a bush. <laughs> I'm going to play it off. I'm going to play it off like... They were watching us. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's one successful check. Good job, Zorak. Um, <laughs> Valeda, you're able to pick up a faint trail and get it the general direction. Jeb... Um, you find a little bird, Robin. That's it. Oh, just was, sitting up I on a little twig. I do the swallow joke. Never mind. <laughs> it's a European Robin. I will converse with it in Robin speak, which I imagine is just chirping. Mm -hmm. And then get get whatever information that we have, and then Hi. scuttle off. Hi. Hi. Aelin's watching just fascinated. <laughs> I thought this is what we were doing now. No, that's just my voice. This is very rude. Sorry. <laughs> you know where the castle is? What's a castle? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that You're talking about that tall thing? <laughs> made of stone? Yeah. That's the one. It's that way. Thank you. Points his feather toward the direction of all it is already walking. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Halen just looks over at Jeb and is like, were you just talking bird? Yes, I can in fact talk bird. So cool. Thank you, I am cool. Very much. So with three successful checks, you guys make it to the castle. Um... Aelin didn't yeah. make a check. <laughs> yeah, you guys only needed three successful ones, and you succeeded all of them. <laughs> cool. <laughs> One of the successes was killing a goblin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I figured I'd just allow it, because it was too good. Why not? I thought you were going to make him kill the bird that I was talking to. <laughs> I thought about it, but I was like, no. No, that's too mean. Uh, so, yeah, once they get there, Alita will think about Gundren's face as he's being pulled away from her, and think about the like the jewelry in his beard and cast the locate object then the chat for you okie dokes why is the music not playing couldn't tell you hmm. uh, so music i hate you playing What can you read it to me while I search for the yeah. music? So describe or name an object that is familiar to you. Sense the direction to the object's location as long as the object is within one thousand feet of you. If the object object is in motion, you know the direction of its movement. The spell can locate a specific object known to you as long as you've seen it up close within thirty feet at least once. Alternatively, the spell can locate the nearest object of a particular kind as such as certain kind of apparel, jewelry, furniture, tool, or weapon. The spell can't locate any I can't locate an object of any thickness of lead. Even a thin sheet blocks a direct path between you and the object. 
So it's only a thousand feet, correct? Yes. Does it give a general direction if not or no? No, it has to be within a thousand feet. Oh shoot, let's see. I do actually have it on here, so let's see if it a thousand feet. I gotta break feet down into miles. What is this? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. No, okay. Uh, you don't get any pinks. The hell! I used the second level spell slot. Let's go find the ban uh the the Agatha. <laughs> You're gonna cast it again to find Agatha? No, I mean we can just go to Coraberry. Can 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 Canaberry? <laughs> okay. Are Wherever you gonna do anything else at this castle? Search around or anything? Oh, I guess we can. Like, yeah, I'll search for any sign of the brothers, even though. Uh, Sildar didn't say that they found him at all. Yeah. And then I guess we're going to mess with an owl bear. <laughs> cool. So, everybody roll me perception checks as you guys kind of tear apart this place a bit yeah. looking for things. Well, Aelin is looking I for uh, can I, can possibly I do effeminate objects. You got a 19 and a 20, so 23. Can I do oh, you prefer to roll an investigation? I'll allow it. 17. Cool. Yeah. Zorag's third eye opens. <laughs> Zorag, you, uh, you, unless you would be against this, return to the room where uh, Jack was killed. And you find tucked under the bed Where the hell is it? Room 14, okay. Uh, you find uh, 50 gold in a sack, three potions of healing. And not... okay. Uh, let's see. And in the room on the table, you find there's like there's it's like a desk, and there's all these books and papers and stuff scattered throughout it. Um, and you find one paper that it's got like a little blood stain on it, and it catches your eye. Um, and it just has like a few things. Uh, written down on it, like quickly jotted down, um, and it says like campsite uh, five miles from, or a few like, a few miles from Wave Echo Cave, uh, big door or locked locked door. Get the password. Passcode, passphrase, something like that. I'm going to turn to Valida. I assume they're with me. Yeah. Sure. Uh, kind of give them the gold coins and the three healing potions, and hand Valida the note. And say, I, I can't read. <laughs> she'll, she'll read it. How many gold coins were there? Fifty. Fifty. Um, she'll pass the healing potions. Who doesn't have one currently? Aelin does not have one. Jeb and Zorik, do you have yours still? Ish have ice. What, did Zorik have one, did you say? Or did I you? had used it. Okay, so Jeb has his still. Yeah. Okay, so I'll give one to Aelin, one to Zorik, and one to myself. That's just a common? Yeah. And what is that? What's the roll for that? I keep forgetting to add that. 2d4 two plus 2. 2d4 plus 2. Two. Two plus two. Alright. Yeah, she'll keep the no with her. So, essentially, it's five or five miles to the I Wave just... Echo Cave. Camp is five miles to the Wave Echo Cave? Yeah, or it, near so the Wave I, Echo I just... I shouldn't have said five miles. It's just... Talks, it talks about a camp that's like a few miles from Wave Echo Cave. 
And then, um... And there's the, a big door. There's a locked door, and they need a passcode. Okay. While this is happening, can I ritual cast another detect magic? Sure. In the room that Jack died in. The room Jack died that's in. Done, I'll do a quick once over of that, and I also want to look at the potion, the mystery potion that we've got to see if I can detect a school from that. If it's Does anyone case, actually it's... say to Aelin this was where Jack died? Aelin, there is a lot of blood here. <laughs> Moods probably get testy around this particular yeah. room. You can roll me an insight check if you'd like. Oh. You set the DC. Um, but yeah, Zorag isn't too keen on being here, but he knows he has to be. 13. Yeah. You get the feeling that this this is probably where it happened. Everybody's acting a little weird. There's a lot of blood. Um, you you get the sense that it probably was in this room. And we don't find anything else pertaining to the brothers. Uh, you don't find anything pertaining to the brothers, except you do see in the room with the owl bear. Uh, a body. So you're not sure whose body it is. Do they look but... dwarven size? The bones at least? Or a good amount was ripped off of them and eaten, but mm, roll me a perception check. Do you have a light or anything? Because it is kind of dark in here, don't forget. In some areas. I think we'd, I'd light a torch because I need it. Yeah. And and I'm I'm pretty sure of myself that there's nothing left here to get a six. <laughs> you can't tell. You'd have to get closer to this body to find out. The owl bear also seems to either be sleeping or dead or Yeah, I was about to ask something. if it was doing. It's, it's hard to see anything, so you're not really sure. But it's not moving. The owlbear's not Can moving. Can I throw some rations in there? Sure. Yeah, you toss in some rations. Do you do anything else? Uh, I'm going to throw a rock to try and wake up. No, I'm not trying to hit it. I'm trying to just hit it like a wall. Okay. Yeah, you throw a rock at the wall. Tink. And uh, you do see the owl bear move. It looks up. It sees the food and it kind of just waddles over to it, plops it down, pecks at the the rations. And I'll take some more out and like whistle for it and just put it right at the crack where I am at so that it knows that I'm giving it to it. So you're like holding your hand through the crack. Well, like, yeah, I'll I'll put my hand through the crack, but I'm not going to continue to hold it because I don't want it biting my damn hand off. I'll just, like, set it down on the ground near the crack. Okay, yeah, it comes over. It starts nibbling at that stuff as well. I put my hand out to touch its head while it's eating, I'm trying to see if it's going to be receptive to me or not. Uh, give me an animal handling. Uh, you going to get eaten. 13. Uh, let me... I'm, I'm gonna roll. Okay. Uh, it's... It kind of... Uh, like, goes back at first seeing your hand it's timidly. And then it kind of leans into you. And you're, you pet it. I'm gonna get you out of here. Um, <laughs> it's an bear owl noise. That's the best I can do. <laughs> She'll turn back to everybody. And say, I'm going to let this thing out. I'm going to knock down this wall. Uh, be where you will. <laughs> and she's going to start trying to take down the wall. Ela's just going to go, yeah, I'm going to go that way. <laughs> this is, I assume, after the ritual's done, right? So I, I would be with you guys. Sure. Uh, did you walk around a little bit with the ritual? How long does it last after being it's cast? Ten minutes. ten minutes. So you walk around for a bit. 
uh, with this activated. You didn't sense anything else in the room that you cast it in. Okay. Uh, you do... Let's see. You do sense some things from actually in the room where the owl bear is. Okay. Uh, let's see. Anything else? There's a lot of notes in here. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's all you you sense. What um, school of magic did the mystery potion give off? Oh gosh. <laughs> I I think it would be illusion. Let me double check. Um. <laughs> yep, illusion. Okay, so I'm 90% sure this is a potion of visibility then. Okay, cool. Um, great. Cool. So I will prepare myself to walk into the room of the Albert. You're going to walk in? When, when it's freed. Yeah, know. I'm going to rip down the wall and then okay. try and lead it outside with repressions. Okay, yeah. Uh, give me some um, athletics checks. That's good enough. I don't know why I said multiple. Jeb was <laughs> probably helping, I assume, or were you just waiting? I would have either helped or guided, or both. Okay. So, yeah. Well, yeah, it it takes like ten minutes of like ripping bricks off the wall. They were already kind of loose, so it's not super hard. But sometimes you really gotta, you know, do that back and forth thing and wiggle things out until you get enough of what you think could be a gap that it could squeeze through. It might be a little tight. Take out some more rations to lead it outside. Give me one more animal handling check. Heck! Can I aid in that it, or no? Yeah. yeah, you totally can. Uh, with advantage. 21. 21. Thank God for the advantage. I love this little <laughs> owl bear. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Just walking backwards, handing it rations as I lead it outside. And once we get out there. I'm gonna hug it. <laughs> I'm gonna hug it around the neck. I'll say, "You're, you're free to go." <laughs> Sharp streams just came true. I, do, do, I love do. you. <laughs> Balance into the forest. All right, back to the room. <laughs> I mean, that thing was pretty cool. It would have been nice to keep it around a bit. Yeah, but it's it's it meant to be it. free. I'm not saying, peeks I'm back saying. around the corner and goes like, and, and sees uh, Valida hugging it, and she goes like, oh my god, she's crazy. <laughs> I love it so do, much. Do I see like, you, do you not see this look of like craziness, like, or like, what the hell on your face? Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah, you see it. It, it. She's not trying to hide it at all, so it's like. So what? <laughs> that nature can be nice. I found it better than most civilization. Uh, yeah, yeah, I believe that. It's just, um, I've seen people with, um, you know, missing limbs from bad interactions. Well, it's good to have that thing back out. Well, I don't know if it started in this castle. What its life has been up to this point. Much better. Are there any eggs in there? <laughs> no. <laughs> now you've done it. Oh my god, I am so tempted to just say yes. You guys can do it. I don't be so bear. mad. <laughs> I will kill you, Grace. No, because do it. Do it. She, Make she, it jealous. She wouldn't have left if it was if it was a mama owl bear. It wouldn't have left yeah, the eggs in there. It. So yeah. no, there was no eggs. <laughs> as much as I am tempted to let you guys have an owl bear because that's badass. <laughs> Maybe if we continue on, who knows? <laughs> yeah. So, right. in this room, Jeb, you're able to find that the magic is coming from a wooden chest that's tucked under one of these benches in here. 
Um, anybody else who's looking around the room, you see uh, anybody who would be looking at the body. It's uh, it appears to be a stubbier human male, balding with a beard. Uh, it doesn't look too old of a of a corpse. Maybe like, well, I guess it's actually at this point. It's actually probably a few weeks old, uh, and it's been picked apart pretty good. Um, if you would like to roll an investigation check on this thing to get more Aelin will do that. Aelin okay. will do okay, an investigation yeah, on it. Yeah, I once I got close to it, because that was part of the goal of this. I don't know. <laughs> Did you say humanoid or humanoid? It's a humanoid, and if you guys have any ideas on your own, it doesn't matter if you failed your investigation. Is you it Santa? It. But it's 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 a balding right. male, kind of kind of chubby, shorter, with a beard. Um, so is his face kind of intact or not really? Sort of. You know, as much so, as yeah. a couple week your a uh, couple week old dead face can look. I don't know how how much I knew just to even go into a f it's like oh he's been here a little while he's um a little ripe <clears throat> the spirits brought him on to his afterlife whoever he was I hate to assume it, but it possibly is a rock seeker. Check for dwarvish. Yeah, is there any like dwarvish writing on any of his stuff? No. Damn. No, and but he's shorter and has a big beard. We can only shorter assume. balding beard. Uh... Were any of the brothers balding? <laughs> There was a bald brother, but he was... It was more like clean-shaven head. But this is... This is... Looks like it was probably too tall to be a dwarf. Not okay. quite the same type of features as a dwarf. More of just a human. Okay. Yeah. I am Please, his spirit has passed on. I don't think he's who we're looking for. It's still sad all the same. Is the body wearing anything still? That's a good question. Uh, Let's just take the body with us. <laughs> yeah, there's still some like rags of clothes, like been torn apart as well, obviously. But, Aelin uh, is gonna try to roll uh, the body over to see if there's anything underneath it. Okay. There's nothing under the body. I'm trying to think of anything we can do here. <laughs> but there's no... Yeah. You guys just roll so bad when it matters. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's how it goes. Yeah. No, it... Nothing under the body. Zorai, what are you doing? I'm kind of hanging out with him. Um, I'm looking around the room... I'm not necessarily looking for any type of uh, language uh, inscriptions or scratches on the walls. I'm just keeping alert as to everything around us. See if I notice any changes that I think might mean that there's someone in there with us or someone watching us. Yeah, give me a perception check. I swear if this is a crit. Oh, okay. It's going to be a fat 20, but not a nat 20. The old dirty 20. You, you're pretty dirty sure nobody 20. is in here. <laughs> I love how you're like, I swear to God, if this is a crit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, I think we've exhausted our options here. Do we head for Conaberry? Well, if we're going to talk with Agatha, we're going to need a gift for her. Um, can we check to see if any of the rooms possibly have like a, I don't know, a comb or... Do you 
Do you know if she uh, if she answers questions for multiple people or just one? Unfortunately, I don't have that much details, but do I know anything else other than what uh, Grista has caught me up on? Yeah, you're not exactly sure how much she'll tell, but it seems you've gotten the gist from from Gariel. You kind of think that uh, if you're on her good side, she might answer a couple questions. Um, so you don't you don't really know for sure, but okay. Well, Probably they'll take out the goblet, the one that's worth 150. Say, well, I've got this. Do you think she'd like this? It's possible. Um, I'd like to take a quick run through to see if maybe there's like a, a comb because yeah. she's very vain. Uh, so, you rolled that 15 earlier when you were looking around and uh, we kind of yes. skipped over it. Um, in the... I guess back in the room where uh, Jack had died, you would have found on the table a uh, a mirror. A silver mirror. Alright, she'll... I'll say that she passed over and on the way back she sees the glimpse of it and uh, picks it up. About how big is the mirror? It's like a, one of those handhold ones. You hold it in your hand and you know? Gotcha. It's like, well, if you have a gift for her, uh, we could use this as a gift as well. And, uh, I know that she, we have heard that she's very susceptible to flattery, so... Well, we've got a daddy here that could do that. <laughs> Oh, are you a father? <laughs> um, no. Check that off. Sorry, You're not a father. Oh, that kind of daddy. Oh, okay. All right. What kind of daddy? Do you... uh, yes, yes, uh, yes. <laughs> All right, do you know the way to? I always have to stop thinking about that. Conaberry. Conaberry. Do you know the way to it? I do I? I think so. Uh, no, but um It's on right off map. It's on right off map. You knew that from okay. earlier. Oh, I knew that from earlier. <laughs> Alright, let's head that way. Good thing I didn't give this back to <laughs> what's her name? <laughs> Quailene. So looking at this map, it looks like Ag Agatha's lair. Uh, is kind of far. A cart might make it quicker. You guys can go on foot, but it'll probably be like a day's travel. Well, by I'll cart, cart by foot. If you're gonna go by on foot, foot okay. it'll probably take you like 24 hours of traveling. Well, like 16 hours. Trend maybe. Oh, I don't know. No, I don't Forty foot of movement now, man. Maybe not that far. <laughs> let me let me pull up the ruler. From here. By the way, this whole time that they've been talking, I've been trying to open this box. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I've seen him trying to open this box. Yeah, you definitely see him trying to open this box. Uh, Jeb, how are you trying to open the box? Well, I will try and just open it, and then if it's locked, I will um, probably attempt to mount the lock. Yeah, so... Um, I will... Before he starts melting the lock, can I offer him uh, some assistance? You look over and you see him melting the lock. Um, okay. And you can offer him ex uh, assistance because it just looks like the lock is getting really hot and it's not quite melting yet or anything, so... Jeb, do you want some help? I'm kind of good with locks. Okay... I brandish my axe. I am too. <laughs> I'll just hold it up, but keep it there, so she can't take it. All right. Okay. It 
It would. It looks like it's like a eight or nine hour walk to cool. get to uh, Agatha's. Sorry, I don't know what you guys are. Look that up. Plus, maybe we can talk around the campfire and do some. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I guess I'll. S session. <laughs> I guess I bring out my little uh, toolkit, and I think I just had to click on the tool to roll it, right? Correct. See if it opens. It might All right. ask you what you want to roll with. Just click Dex if it does. Dirty. Uh, 11, but I think I'm proficient in that, right? Well, that just adds a plus 2, and I think I okay. put it in already. Yeah. Alright, so 11. Or it's a plus, it's a plus 3, so yeah, it already added. Yeah, this thing wasn't supposed to have a lock on it to begin with. I just made it have a lock because <laughs> I felt like it. So, cool. uh, yeah, you ch ch uh, pop All it right. open. There and you go. Your eggs inside. Oh, God, no. <laughs> inside, you find... Uh, <laughs> you find 90, sorry, th that's an Electrum, and I don't like Electrum. You find 40 gold pieces. Hey. Uh, 100, oh, okay. You find 160 gold pieces. Hey, okay. Uh, a potion of healing, and two more scrolls. Oh, my God. <sighs> <laughs> what? Nothing? Oh, what kind of scroll is it, Gris? <laughs> <laughs> can is it I ask Jeb, oh, by? can I take a look at those scrolls? <laughs> no, it's not. Is it the not. one the paladin can do? <laughs> I know this yeah, is metagaming. <laughs> it's too I good have, not to metagame it, though. I have to share this with you. It literally <laughs> says... I can't read it so blurry. I can't read that. It's blurry and pixelated. Which, and it says, <laughs> Scroll of Revivify. Fucking. I ooh. think that's the one that Paladins can do, too. So I could have oh, done it. Oh, we just burnt our friend. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it has to be oh. a minute after, so it, it, it wouldn't have worked anyway. You would have yeah, had to come to, long. You would have had to come to this room first. Yeah, yeah you and, see, if we would have just went into the goddamn now there room. But don't you still need the diamond? Or do you get to cast it without components? Uh, you don't need components for a scroll. For a scroll, yes, it's a scroll. <laughs> oh, dudes. I was preloaded. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm, I'm checking. One. I'm not sure that paladins can learn it. I have to double check it. They can. Paladins you know can learn okay. it. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, that's, that's yeah, actually kind of funny. funny. <laughs> Dora uh, grabs his It is. Thir it's a third level up. spell. I still would have had to roll for it, but I could have done it. Yeah. <laughs> what were you saying, Zorak? <laughs> oh, he grabbed his great axe and uh, he chopped his own head off after learning. <laughs> we did head. come to this room first, but we left it alone because I, you, cause I you didn't guys, want to get our ass kicked by an owlbear. <laughs> you guys do not know what <laughs> so these funny. scrolls are unless, I can. unless <laughs> Volley can read one. <laughs> like, actually looks at it and reads it, then he can read that so one. None of them are druid <laughs> scrolls? Um, well, can you cast silence? Anybody who can cast silence can read this one too. That might be another paladin one. Let me check. Uh, hang on. No, it's not. It, it, mm, yeah, it's not a normal. It is silence again. No, none of us can learn that. Son of a bitch. Okay. For the scroll of silence, when you put it in your inventory, just like add a question mark so that you know you don't know what it is yet. Um, but the is it like an enchantment? Know. So who's, who's put it in their inventory? <laughs> Give me I the scroll of Revivify. Yeah, I assume Volida is going to take that because she's the only one that can use it. Hey, if anybody wants to die, <laughs> I'll I'll take the mystery scroll because I've already got three of them. So that's so funny. Cool. All right, so that was 160 gold. Jeb, are you sharing or are you going to keep it all for yourself? Because you need to buy horses, I right? Keep this for the horses. If if. I have leftovers. I'll hand that out, I guess. That's that's funny that that you talk about sharing the 
usually Jack just keeps it off. Yeah, it's weird. That's weird. That's weird. We just keep it for ourselves. Oh, well, I'll, I'll take it for now and then we can dally it out afterwards. Yeah. So, well, so I would just, how this would have actually played out in game, uh, she would have, like, Valida would have looked over the shoulder as they looked at the scroll. <laughs> She's like, I'll take this one. It just puts She it. never told anybody, just, right? Doesn't tell anybody what it is. It just puts probably, it in her bag. Probably for the best. So you for really our, wanted no, Jack no, to no. learn her lesson. <laughs> oh my god. That's so funny. I'm still laughing. That is crazy. I did not read what that treasure was until just now. <laughs> it's even better that we came to this room and purposely avoided it. <laughs> yep. Yep. Damn, dude. Oh my god. Okay, well, <laughs> so after you've investigated the rest of the, the castle, I assume you are heading to Conaberry? Yeah. Okay, sure. so uh, you guys head off back toward the Tribor Trail in order to follow it, because it does show on Rydoth's map that Conaberry is uh, off, of the, off of the trail. Um, and you guys head off in... We're going to end the episode there uh, with you guys going on your next big adventure. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Whew. <laughs> Sorry, he's going to kill everything he sees. <laughs> Sorry, he doesn't know about the room. He yeah, doesn't. God. But if you ever tell him, he's going to kill himself. I'm, that was just a joke. I was just throwing that out there as a joke. Like, <laughs> shot my own head off. We'd bring you back if we did so. God damn it. Yeah, I can bring him back. <laughs> oh, okay, we'll just bring him back. <laughs> Zora that, cuts his own head off again. <laughs> that was, like, I think the worst ending of the episode we could have ever had. We had the so, most epic, yeah. wonderful, beautiful <laughs> funeral. The episode and you ends find with out you guys if you being had like, just gone into the other room. And then we got a middle oh. finger from the campaign module. Like, <laughs> fuck you. And we had the cute owlbear, and I got to hug it. <laughs> And then that happened. Oh my god. Yeah, you don't need any Honestly, material components. Um, <laughs> once spells cast. Should it have been like, yeah, you find a scroll of lightning bolt. If, if the spell <laughs> is your class of spell, uh, spell list, but higher level than you can normally cast, you must succeed an ability check using your spell casting modifier. Mm -hmm. Determine whether it's ca cast successfully. The C DC equals 10 plus the spell's level. So I would have had to roll... A ten, I think, or no, yeah, ten, because it's a third level spell. At the end of the day, it didn't matter. Yeah. You know why? Because yeah, you were out, yeah. you were outside, and you wouldn't have gotten there within a minute. That's true. I was also outside. Did we well, sign off the episode yet? Is that a thing <laughs> that we did? Not yet. Oh, uh, okay. Thank you all so much for watching. We hope you found a way to enjoy uh, this funeral. <laughs> And we'll see you all again on Monday for Morris, Wednesday for Theros. Uh, check out our Bard Out of Hell one shot that went up on Tuesday if you haven't yet. And yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, on YouTube, YouTube exclusive. And again, Friday for Fandelver. So hope to see you all next time, Fan Fam. Till then, Fan Fam. Peace. Make sure you watch the one shot. Ooh.